Hello and welcome to the 5.05 Enthalpy of Reaction screencast. I'm Mrs. Willie and let's get started. So we're just building on what we've been learning about in the thermochemistry unit in that heat is transferring between an object and its surroundings or between particles like we learned about in a phase change last time. So this time we're going to focus on heat or energy transfer of a reaction. So talking about breaking chemical bonds, forming chemical bonds, and this occurs under constant pressure. So you would use this in one of those coffee cup calorimeters. And so the system is always going to be the chemicals undergoing the change, so the reactants. When I put my reactants into a coffee cup calorimeter, I'm then determining what's going to happen. Um, usually, we can use water like we do in the coffee cup calorimeter. That would be your surroundings. Otherwise, if say you're burning a Cheeto and you're doing a combustion reaction like we usually do for this, you are combusting the Cheeto and the surroundings is everything else, the table, the paper clip, the can and the transfer to the water, you feeling the radiant heat in the room, the atmosphere. So the enthalpy of the reaction, depending on how you are doing it, is going to change what the surroundings are. But the system is always the chemicals or where the chemical bonds are breaking and reforming. So uh, we're going to use delta H again, H or delta H interchangeably with Q. I know this is getting confusing. So the delta H of the system is the total heat content of the system at constant pressure. This includes the internal energy. So the chemical, kinetic, and potential energy of the particles. So that breaking of bonds and breaking of intermolecular forces. And then the work done on or by the system. So in the case of the Cheeto, it is the heat that's being released as well as the heat that was absorbed to break the chemical bonds. Um, what we mean by constant pressure is that we're doing this in the same environment the entire time. I know the example we gave in our course packet is that you don't take your Cheeto and then move it to the top of a mountain while you're doing your experiment. You're doing your experiment at the same surroundings and the same pressure the entire time. You're not changing the pressure. Uh, and what we mean is that we can actually use the energy released by a chemical reaction to do work. So if you see in my picture here, and this is what like, as you are causing a chemical reaction to occur, the gases that are released can actually be used and transformed into mechanical en energy and move a piston, a lot like what's happening in your car engine. So enthalpy of reaction or reaction enthalpy is the change in heat or energy of a chemical change at constant pressure. We can find this experimentally, like using our coffee cup calorimeter and using Q equals MC delta T and Q equals system equal to Q equals surroundings. And depending on the reaction, the system or the surroundings is exothermic and the system or the surroundings is endothermic. Or we can do it through calculations. We have a set of reference values where chemists have actually performed these experiments in the lab and given us reference values to use to do these calculations. Those measurements are in joules per gram, kilojoules per gram, or kilojoules per mole reaction. So you're gonna use those measured values and dimensional analysis, and then the delta H of formation of a specific change involving a specific mass or number of moles of reactant is used. So the reference values were measured under standard conditions, which is a little superscript of a dot. I know you don't see one here, but I'll point it out when we get to the next slide. 
What that means is that the standard condition for thermochemical reference values is these experiments were completed at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. The reference delta H of formation is an intensive value because the mass was the ma the amount was the same every time. It's usually one mole of reaction or one gram. So they're using the same amount. So I can use this as an intensive value because it was done at the same temperature, same pressure with the same amount present. The delta heat of reaction. Del the delta H or the enthalpy of reaction is actually extensive because it depends on the amount of matter that you're using in your reaction. That's usually not necessarily one mole. And it's the amount of matter of each of the reactants combined. So let's look at how this works. In a thermochemical equation, the balanced chemical equation with a delta H, and this is that period, that little superscript of a period that I was talking about up here on the top. This means that it was done at standard, so 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. It can be written with the value off to the right Right now, you're not going to worry about the little F. That actually stands for delta H of formation, but we are going to skip that for this year. Um, but know that those, those subscripts exist and they do actually mean something. So you're gonna write balance and you're gonna look at this example. So in this example, we have solid silicon plus oxygen gas yields silicon dioxide with a delta H of formation of negative 910.7 kilojoules per mole reaction. So that negative value tells me something. That tells me that this is exothermic and releases energy. So if I'm looking on my next one, I have two, a coefficient of two for each of those. So this means that there were two moles of silicon burning and two moles of oxygen. And it ought to be, if using dimensional analysis, 910.7 kilojoules per mole reaction. Now you have two moles occurring. So that should be 910.7 times two, which would be 18, let's double check on our calculator here, negative 910.7 times two does give me negative 18.4 kilojoules. In the next example, they're reversing the equation. So they've all they've done is taken the products up here and made them the reactants. So now this was a synthesis reaction. This is the decomposition reaction. So now they've taken the products and made them the reactants and then your reactants became your products. When you flipped that, you have to flip the sign on your delta H of formation. So this process would be endothermic, not exothermic. So next, we have a, re a lovely reference table for you to help you to know what all of these subscripts mean on these enthalpies. Uh, this is on page 41 of your course packet. Um, so at the very beginning, the delta H of COMB is the delta H of combustion or the enthalpy of combustion per mole of the reaction. The delta H of F is that, like I said, the enthalpy of formation. So that's per one mole. Formation is the synthesis of one mole of compound from its elements under standard conditions. Formation equations are the only equations where it is permitted to use fractions as coefficients. Then you have delta H of solution per mole of reaction. 
This could be dissolution, which is the dissolving of a solid in a solvent, usually water. Then you have the delta H of reaction per mole of reaction. Rxn is a general term that could be used in place of combustion or F, but we like to use the combustion and the F in this class just to make sure things are very straightforward. And then, like I said, the superscript of what looks like a degree symbol tells you that that enthalpy was measured under standard conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius and one. All right, so now we're going to look at how to calculate delta H of reaction using stoichiometry. So I'm going to give you an equation. The equation is QP, so again, inter interchangeably using Q and delta H. So QP is equal to, delta H was equal to N, which is the number of moles, times the delta H of the reaction at standard conditions. So in our first, we're going to use the same equation that we used last time, silicon plus oxygen yields silicon dioxide. And I have the delta H of formation. So I have some information missing here, but it is what is the delta H of reaction of three moles of combustion of silicon. So I'm going to just use simple dimensional analysis here, 3.0 moles of silicon. And I'm going to keep the negative 910.7 because I'm combusting. I'm trying to figure out how much energy it would take to combust three moles of silicon instead of just one mole of silicon. So this becomes negative 910.7 kilojoules per mole. I can cancel out the moles of silicon. Remember, I multiply anything on the top, so 3.0 times negative 910.7 gives me negative 2732.1 kilojoules because our moles canceled out. Uh, I only had two significant figures in my original question, so I need to round this to two significant figures, which becomes 2700 kilojoules. Next question. What is the delta H of reaction of six moles of the decomposition of silicon dioxide? So that's important because I know that this was synthesis. So I'm going to have to reverse the equation, which means I'm going to have to reverse my sign here. So for this one, it's going to be a positive 910.7 kilojoules per mole reaction. So again, I start with 6.0 moles of SiO2, and then I'm going to multiply by a positive 910.7 kilojoules this time because the moles will cancel. So when I put this into my calculator, 6 times... 910.7, I get five, oops, let me write that out. So six times a positive 910.7 gives me 5464.2 kilojoules. Again, only two significant figures. So this rounds to 5,500 kilojoules. And this is a positive number, and oops, I forgot, this should be a negative number up here. I forgot to carry my negative sign over. So next, now we're going to calculate delta H of the reaction using stoichiometry. So not all quantities will be given in moles. So you're going to have to use dimensional analysis, and then you use the coefficient from the balanced thermochemical equation for the conversion. So I always, always, always double check to make sure that my thermochemical equations are balanced. So let's see, three carbons, three carbons, eight hydrogens, four times two is eight, eight hydrogens, uh, 10 oxygens, six 
plus 4 is equal to 10 oxygen. So my equation is balanced. So then, first question is, I have to determine what the limiting reactant is. So it says, use the following thermical equation to calculate delta H of the reaction for the production of 80 grams of water vapor. So I have moles, or sorry, I have grams here, and then I have mole reaction up here, so I'm going to have to do some dimensional analysis. I remember 80.00 grams, uh, and I know that this is going in the right direction because water vapor is on the product side. So 80 grams of water. I use my trusty periodic table to convert from grams to moles. So from grams to moles, we use molar mass. The molar mass of water is 18.015 grams. That's if I took the molar mass or the mass of two hydrogens and added it to the mass of one oxygen in one mole of water. which is then equal to, and if I look at my balanced chemical equation, this is important, I have four moles of water from the, and that's where the mole reaction comes in, from the balanced equation. So it's going to be four moles, so I use the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation, and then negative 2200.1 kilojoules on the top. So now in my calculator... 80 times negative 2220.1 divided by 18.015 times 4 gives me, let's go ahead and put this in, 80 times negative 2220.1 20 divided by 18.015 times 4 gives me a negative 24, 59.94 in my calculator. So negative 24, 59.94 and that would be kilojoules because the grams cancel, moles cancel, I'm left with kilojoules. Then I go back, I had four significant figures. So that's gonna round to four significant figures. So I get negative 2460, and I have to make sure to put the decimal there to get four significant figures. Next. What is the delta H of reaction for the production of 40 grams of oxygen gas? So this time we're gonna have to reverse our equation because oxygen is a reactant. So having to use a positive 2220.1 kilojoules per mole reaction here. So I'm gonna again start with 40.00 grams of O2. I'm going to use the molar mass of O2, remember diatomic, so I'm going to have to have 31.998 grams of O2 in one mole of O2 times, if I go back up to my equation, I have five moles of oxygen, and this time I have my positive value of 2220.1 kilojoules. So in my calculator, it will look like 40 times a positive 2220.1 divided by 31.998 times 5, which gives me 40 times 2220.1 divided by 998 times 5, which gives me a positive 555.06. 
Uh, I had four significant figures, so I'm going to give myself four significant figures here. So this becomes 555.1 kilojoules.